Jesus. Yes, to your way, Lord. Wherever you send me, Lord, I will give you a song and yes. And then no other place I would rather be than giving you glory for all of the ways that you made for me. I can't help but to bless you. I can't help but to lift you. I can't help but honor your name. I can't help but glorify your name. Will you help me bless you? Will you help me bless you? Will you help me bless you? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. You place on your mind on today that when I rise, hallelujah, I'm going to give God everything that I have in me to give up. Hallelujah. That if nobody else prays him, that if nobody else realizes who he is, I'm going to give God, hallelujah, everything that I can give up. You see, I realize who he is in my life. And I realize that I couldn't have done this and I couldn't have got this far without him, hallelujah. But because my name was on the wake up list on today, hallelujah, but because he allowed me to see another day, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm going to take this opportunity Hallelujah, it's when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. I can't sit there silent. I can't sit there with my hands folded. I can't stay contained in my seat when I begin to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Every time there. I can't help but to give God glory. I can't help but to give Him glory. Sometimes we gotta forget about where we are. We gotta forget about what we left back at home. Somebody say, God, it's much worthy than what we give Him. Somebody ought to open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. Hey, come on, try ya. You ought to act like it. You ought to be grateful that lay down their life for you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody going to get it in a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the presence of the Lord was already here when we got here. Hallelujah. We don't have to wait on them. But his presence was already here. Woo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're sitting here today. Hanabashaya. You're sitting here today. And as you are in the house of worship, somebody is coding right now. Somebody is a near death experience right now. But you are here with nothing wrong with you. Hallelujah. Why you won't give them glory? Hanabashaya. Hanabashaya. Lord, whatever it is, God, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Whatever it is, God, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Whatever it is, God, turn it around, turn it around. Hey, the Messiah, in the name of Jesus, block it. Hey, the Messiah, hallelujah, somebody on a shot. Lord, whatever it is, turn it around, God. Hallelujah, I don't see it. I can't see it coming. But Lord, Around for me and my family. I'm rebuked the hands of death right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Somebody ought to open up your mouth and begin to bless the Lord in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, why? Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless them right where you are. Somebody bless them right where you are. Somebody bless them right where you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Hey, shut the yellow of my soul. Yes, God. 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 Lord, do it in this place today. Lord, do it in the lives of your people today. Lord, do it in the hearts of your people today. Do it on their own today, Jesus. Do it in their minds today, God. Do it in their hearts today, Lord. 
praise for the word. Hallelujah. For the breath that's burning warm in your body. You want to open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. You want to bless them for waking you up in your right mind. You want to give them glory on today. Hallelujah. Because he did not allow your enemies to triumph over you. What will you do? Will you give them glory? in that place yeah, yeah. Woo! come on come on yes Lord come on and pray come on and pray yes Lord come on you got two Hallelujah, come on and lift those hands all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah for this portion of the service. We thank you, hallelujah, for what you have already done today, God. Father, we bless you in advance for where you're getting ready to lead us in the next phase of this service. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for another divine opportunity, Father God, to give your name glory on today. Hallelujah. Because the only agenda in the room today is his agenda. Hallelujah. The only agenda in this house today will be his agenda. Hallelujah. So, God, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited about the word? Hallelujah. Is anybody excited about being refreshed and being restored in the house today? Hallelujah. Anybody woke up grateful? Hallelujah. That you're alive? Anybody glad to be in the house of God again? Hallelujah. Giving God the glory because he is so worthy of all glory and all of the honor. And we bless your name, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done in our lives and in this place god we magnify your name hallelujah all over the room come on we're all standing as a man servant is preparing himself hallelujah to come to take us all higher in today's worship service we want to pray for his strength hallelujah we pray come on and stretch your hands forth hallelujah the man of god hallelujah Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Lord God, we pray now, Lord God, hallelujah, that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We ask now, Lord God, hallelujah, that you would anoint him afresh, oh God. That you would go before him, Lord God, in this place, oh God. That when he begins to open up his mouth, Father God, hallelujah, that he'll speak what you say, God. That he would hear, Lord God, the words that you would send down from heaven, Father God. That will charge, oh God, and penetrate, Lord God, through every heart and every listening ear today. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we pray now that you would move around him now, God. Move in him, move through him, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over him now, God. Order his steps today in you, Father God. Lord God, let the words, oh God, hallelujah, that shall come out of his mouth, oh God, be anointed by you today, oh God. And we ask now, Lord God, to let the fresh oil flow from the crown of his head today to the sole of his feet, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. And God, if you do this for us, we'll never fail to give your name praise, glory, and honor in Jesus name will you help me if I'm putting your hands together hallelujah and welcoming our pastor our shepherd our leader to his pulpit hallelujah come on and put those hands together for elder pastor John David Wright hallelujah come on let's clap our hands and give God praise <laughs> 
Anybody love the Lord today? My soul loves Jesus. My soul really loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Hallelujah. My soul really loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My, my soul loves Jesus. Bless, bless his name. He the wonder. Somebody clap your hands real fast right there. In my soul, he is a wonder. Wonder in my soul, he is a wonder. Wonder in my soul, bless his name. He is a wonder. Wonder in my soul, he is a wonder, yeah. Wonder in my soul, he is a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Let the church say it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, just slap somebody, tell them I got a reason to tell them thank you. You don't know what I've been through. I got a reason to tell them thank you. This ain't an empty thank you. This thank you is full of trials and tribulation. This thank you is full of testimony. This thank you is full of I could have lost my mind. But since I'm still here, I gotta tell them thank you. Yes, Lord. Be seated. Be seated. I saw Sister Rochelle. I just asked your mother. I didn't know if you was here. But I saw the devil trying to take Clay out. The devil tried to take him out. It was the enemy's plan to snatch him. My God. But God covered him right there. There were angels protecting him right there. You see, every now and then, you'll see Sister Rochelle break out in a pray. Every pray ain't for you. Some of y'all don't catch what I'm saying. Every time you shout, it ain't always for you. Sometimes you're blocking what the enemy is trying to do to your family members. Sometimes you're blocking. Hey, come on, my 
what the enemy is trying to accomplish. But I dare you for about one minute to give God the best praise that you can give him right now. Even if all is well with you, it's going to send angels. Hey! do bother me. Hey! Angels watching over me. All day long, all night long, all week long. Yeah! All right. Don't you be no fool. Every praise you give ain't just for you. Sometimes you pray to God for somebody on your road. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Be seated if you can. That just like God, you can pray them here and he covers somebody over there. That's just like God. Be seated, y'all. Be seated. Hallelujah. He's covered. All right. Tithing is right. The Bible says bring all the time into the store. Praise him, Brother Eric Hendricks. That's Hendricks. We got a lot of Eric's. We got Parker, we got Morgan, and we got Hendricks. Hallelujah. Come here, Brother Adrian. Come here. I'm going to pray for you right now. Come here, Adrian. Whatever is trying to attack your mind, if it's a headache, Whatever it is, a migraine, I come against it right now. Listen. Anybody else dealing with migraine headaches? You can barely sleep at night. Where you at? I just want to lay my hand on you just one time. I just want to touch your head one time. God's going to give you ease. I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. Ease right now. Ease right now. Oh my God. Woo. I speak easement right now, even when, even when, every blood vessel in your brain, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Anybody else got migraine headaches, migraine headaches? You can't drink this headache away. In the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and shout, I'm healed right now.
Yes, we do. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our tithers are coming. If you need an envelope, sit your hands up. Good to see you, Sister Ali. Always good to see you. If you need a tithing envelope, slip your hand up. There's a sound of victory in the house. My God, there's a sound of victory. All right, come on, we're moving. We're still praising, but we're moving. Tithing is right. <laughs> the Bible says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. That's what the Bible says. Can I tell y'all something? Listen, I am in one of the greatest financial seasons of my life. I am in one of the greatest financial seasons of my life. Y'all gonna laugh at me. It's so crazy right now. I'm at McDonald's and I don't even order from the dollar menu. I'm in that season. Some of y'all that roll with me, y'all know how I roll. And if I'm in the greatest financial season of my life and I'm your pastor, you see, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all should have caught hold of that thing. Y'all should have caught hold of it. Praise the Lord. This is going to be the greatest financial season of your life. Listen, we want all the tithers. I said that because when your pastor gets blessed, it flows down. And some of us had some struggling times, y'all. Oh, God. Had some struggling days. And 
now we able to pay our bills on time. You always going to have bills. They, they coming. The only thing, you ain't going to have to worry about them. They're going to be paid on time. You ain't going to need no grace, period. Hallelujah. Just point at your own self and say, I ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, we got to move. We want to receive the tithe and offering. Thank you, musicians. Our tithes are coming into the center aisle. And listen. Thank you, musician. Thank you. And, and let me let me tell everybody. I'll, somebody raise your hand and say, encourage me, Pastor. Encourage me. Listen, let me tell you. Some of us are budgeters. We don't have a shopping demon. We Listen, everybody that got a shopping demon, I'm asking that the Lord deal with you. Don't laugh, because if you're not a good steward, God is blessing you, but it's coming right back out. There's going, there's going to be some things that you desire, and you're going to take some paper, and you're going to take some pen, and you're going to crunch some numbers, and it's not going to add up. Somebody raise your hand and say, encourage me, Pastor. It's not going to add up. Just because it doesn't add up, that does not mean God does not want you to have it. You got to have the faith to believe by the time you need it to add up, it's gonna be there. Woo! God, thank you, Dee. Yes, God. Don't you dare let a piece of paper and a pen and your smart mathematics stop you from getting what a powerful God desires you to have. I need eight thousand dollars in three weeks. Step out there and believe God gonna have it for you. Nah, Pastor, that that's um, I, I ain't got that kind of faith. Now I, 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 I know how much I make. Now I can't do that. You are limiting your God. When I pulled up to this church today, and I, I, tithers, please come. When I pulled up to the church today, little do y'all know that most of the work was being done on a promise. It was some frustrating time because like some of y'all, I couldn't see the end result. I couldn't see it. When I pulled up today and I saw the coloring on the building, some of y'all don't. Some of y'all just walk to church like this, but I walk with my head up. I can see where I'm going. Some of y'all walk to church. All the mess I did all week. I don't want nobody to see me going in here. No, not me. <laughs> when I when I saw it. I'm like, had I stopped because we didn't have it, it wouldn't get done.
and it's been times that, you know, the Lord says, and I know you used to fight, Sister Brown, I remember. But if I hold my peace, let the victory shall be mine. So I wanted to encourage you because some of us get discouraged because what it, it, we dreamt about it. We saw visions about it. We got prophecies about it. We even got the word of God told us. We saw it in visions. And we want to throw in the towel because we don't have it yet. Listen, tell your neighbor, look at him and say, neighbor, it's going to happen for you. Our tithes are coming. If you're doing it online, you know what we're doing, dollar sign, new grace tab. It's on the bottom of the screen. If you're doing it any other kind of way, Zell, Pastor Dave 14 at gmail.com. We got Parquet Floor to put back there for the new fellowship hall. Hallelujah. We got to do it. We don't have it yet, but, and I'm a little worried about it, but I know it's going to happen. By the time it's ready for the Parquet Floor, we're going to have it. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I believe God. Come on, hold that tithe up in your right hand. If you are a tither, you did it online, this ain't your pay week, we want you to stand. All tithers stand, all tithers. Everything I just said was a promise to the tither. Those of you that don't believe in tithing, you don't believe in being blessed. Because the Bible says if you're not a tither, then you're cursed with a curse. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our increase. We thank you for all that you've blessed us with so far. But Lord, we're so excited about what you're getting ready to do. You're getting ready to pour us out blessings we don't have room enough to receive. I pray right now that every door that has been shut, that you reopen it, God, if you desire. I pray that the windows of heaven continue to flow. Bless this 10 percent that we're giving to the kingdom and stretch the 90 that's still in our bank account in jesus name we pray everybody shout here i go trust in god again oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good oh oh give thanks Give thanks for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Very quickly, we're moving. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Look, I'm telling um, I have a flyer back there. I left it right there in the sound room. Bring me one of them flyers. Um, they called me to help um, sponsor this concert. I don't know why they come right down the middle aisle. I don't know why they called little old me, but they wanted to have Shirley Caesar come to New York for a Mother's Day. And um, the lady, she came by here today. We have some tickets if anybody's interested. Anybody like Shirley Caesar? Anybody mama like Shirley Caesar? <laughs> so we got some tickets. We have Keith Wonderboy Johnson, the Swanee Quintets, the Mighty Clouds of Joy. I know you like that. Yeah. Pastor Darryl Petty's and Take Two, Billy Walker and the Charlie Story All-Stars, Reverend Matthew Mickens and the Mickens family, Liz Black will be hosting and Pastor David Wright and New York Fellowship Mass Choir and Shirley Caesar. So, um, 
If you want some tickets, we'll have tickets here. This is one of the ticket locations, and we'll have some tickets here for those that want to go. Tickets are $25 for kids, um, 5 to 12. I'm going to get to the date in 10 seconds. The uh, tickets are $25 up to age 12, $50 in advance, $60 at the door, $75 are the VIP tickets, and the date is May 20. First, right here in Brooklyn, New York. They starting at 3 p.m. because there's 37 quartet groups on here. So it's going to be in Brooklyn, New York at the Pilgrim Renaissance Center. All right. And if you ever been to a good old-fashioned quartet concert, they there all day. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for First Lady Wright. God bless her. I'm going to get ready to go into the word of God because we got some stuff to do. Uh, we're going to Dr. Byron Harden's church this afternoon. That's our friend. Amen. How many of y'all are coming with me out there? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's ride. Let's, let's, um, it's, we're going to Long Island. It's in Baldwin, Long Island. Let's uh, carpool. Put some folks in your car. Amen. If you get in somebody's car, give them a couple of dollars for gas. Because gas is what it is. Amen. Gas so high, I told you, I had to go get gas to go get gas. That's high, ain't it? Brother Robinson, I heard you outside on the steps. Amen. We're praying for the Robinson family and the Ford family. They uh, funeralized our good sister on Friday, Sister Joanne, Sister Joan Ford. Um, Joanne. It's a Joanne Ford. She was a faithful member of our choir. Amen. And New York Fellowship, y'all are something else. I saw, I saw what you did. I, I saw what you did, but y'all did it. <laughs> but we thank God. Amen. Now, I'm going to fuss at y'all for about 30 seconds. Thank God for those that came out to uh, help straighten up the church because we, we were painting and stuff and um, I sent the message out to some of the folks this is just for this is 30 second fussing but it's, it's loving the fuss I sent a 30 second message uh, 30 uh, I sent a little message out for some folks that can come out and clean and thank God for those that were able to come and I also said if you can't come please just respond and let me know it took folks over an hour before I even got one response but that's all right but this morning, I text that G Lights menu. I was getting responses before I pushed sin. Two banana put two cheese, the chocolate, the strawberry treat, strawberry shortcake, this and that. I know you don't love sweets more than you love your church. Look at somebody say, if you can't do it, at least let pastor know. That was my fussing moment. Y'all still love me after that? Amen. We thank God for these awesome musicians. And thank you, Sister Rochelle, for those directions this morning. You saved my life. <laughs> they keep doing it. I'm going to talk to Eric Adams. We, they, gotta find, they can't keep doing this on Sunday mornings with all these bike races and marathons and foolishness. Why don't they do it on Saturday? And mess up them Eastern Parkway folks. Yeah. We allow too much. Amen. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go right on into the word of God. Come on, let's stand as we go to the word. God bless those of you that did come yesterday and clean. I know you do it discreetly, so I won't call your name, but I know who you are. And we appreciate you. It's because of you we're not dusting up our clothes. Amen.
I'm a little tired in my body. I had to go pick up my daughter last night after I got in from North Carolina. My flight landed at 10 o'clock at night. Then I had to drive to Penn State, get her. <sighs> because I, I was going to let her, I will say, come on Monday or something. Dad, I want to come home. That's all I need to hear. Dad, I want to come home now. Anybody, your kids still got you wrapped around their finger? Amen. Keep living. Especially you got a baby girl. Hallelujah. Amen. Deacon Parker, you got a baby. You got not a baby girl, but she's a full grown girl. Bless the Lord. But we're going into the word of God. Father God, word my mouth, guide my mind, hide me behind the cross. Let the people see you and not me so that you can be glorified and we can be edified and the devil will remain horrified in Jesus' name. John 3.16, we all know this scripture. Thank you for those of you that are watching online. You can share this, push the share button. Amen. I promise I ain't going to get in no trouble on this message. Amen. <laughs> Brother Walter, you good? You all right with them steps? All right, we're going to get you. We're going to try to make, make a way. We're going we're gonna to work it out for you. Amen. John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. You'll see it, right? Now, the same uh, chapter about 20 verses down verse 36 let me know when you got it he that believes on the son has everlasting life and he that doesn't believe the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abides on him okay so 16 is this the same chapter so let me talk about this this is my subject today God's love and God's wrath. Amen. Amen. Be seated if you can. God's love and God's wrath. Amen. You cannot preach the love of God and not preach the wrath of God. In order to be a whole Christian, anybody want to be a whole Christian, in order to be a, a whole believer, you must have a balanced diet of the word of God. Preaching holiness, when people preach holiness, that is not always a people bashing thing. Holiness is simply what God requires from us. Amen? It's simply teaching what God wants from us. And we, we get confused in the body of Christ because seemingly the ones who we pinpoint as holy are in the most mess. Folks that claim to be Holy Ghost field are some of the messiest people and un- I want to try to, I'm going to make up a new word. Unbible following people. Yeah, that's what I'm going to call it. Because if you super holy and you float and all that stuff and you hum when you talk. Yeah, they be feeling, they walking and floating like that. Why don't we do what the Bible says do? And and I, I and I've been on this. I'm I'm a, I'm strictly. I, I never preach my opinion. I strictly go by the word of God. How can you be so holy and you don't believe that God only wants men to be bishops? See how that is? Because if the Bible says a bishop is the husband of one wife. How you got all the Holy Ghost in the world and you a female and you a bishop? 
And these are the things that I, I, that I look and I have issue with, Sister Brown, because I love everybody, but we got to abide by the word of God. We need a balanced diet of the word of God. And if you can give people a balanced diet, we can draw the masses because nobody's going to come into confusion. Because you got some people out there, they might not be uh, all churchy, but they read the word of God and some of what we do don't match up with his word. Amen, somebody. I love everybody. And, and listen, whew, the reason we have to preach not only the love of God, but the wrath of God, because this whole, there's a lot of different movements going on, and we say, well, God loves everybody, and he does. He does love every last one of us. He loves the sinner just as much as the saint. But there is still a wrath to God. Because if you just preach the love, then there's no reason for people to change. And, I, I, and, I, and this was going to be rough when God gave it to me because he gave this one of them 5 a.m. Wake up, David. I want you to talk to your people about this. It's what he did to me. And a lot of times when things are, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say nothing about this because God loves everybody. He does. But that, just because God loves you, that don't put you in heaven. He loves everybody. Matter of fact, he died for your sins before he even knew you. And yes, you can preach holiness. Let me say it. I want to say it. I want to be politically correct. You can preach holiness and still be gay. But you can't live holiness and still be gay. Oh, let me go sit down somewhere. You can preach holiness and be a lesbian. But you can't live holiness and be a lesbian. All preaching is, is re reciting the word of God. You can sing on the praise and worship team and be a whoremonger. But you can't live holiness and be a whoremonger. And just because we see people do it, doesn't mean God smiles on it. And a lot of times we see people doing this and we see people doing that. You ain't, it ain't up to you. You ain't got no wrath to give them. God got to give them wrath. Well, doesn't God love the homosexual? Yes, he does. Doesn't God love the lesbian? Yes, he does. Doesn't God love the whole? Yes, he does. Because he loved me when I was in it. Okay. I wish somebody would raise their hand and say, he loved me when I was in it. Come on, don't, don't, don't. All right, I know your past now. Don't make me point at you. Didn't he love you when you was it? And he forgave me. See, I, see, I'm different than you. I, I, ain't got, I ain't got no shame about nothing that I've done. Y'all can walk around here with that fake face all you want. All that foolishness. That's why I can't, you can't get, bring nobody to Christ because you ain't got no story. You got one, but you got the book so closed, can't nobody read it. Sometimes you need to open the book and tell your own story before they make up one. Because right. oh, they talking about you, but they just making it up because you won't get up and testify. Look at somebody and say, I can tell my own story.
Look. And let me tell you something. It's as ironic as this sound. And, and, and I told you before, one of my favorite shows is The 600 Pound Life. I, that show gets me all the time. I can, I'm, I'm DVR in the new shows now. But it's funny because his name is Dr. Now. He ain't no slim fella his own self. According to the chart, he's overweight. I went to the doctor the other day, and I, I think I'm pretty all right. And he said, no, you almost obese. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's, that's the white man chart. That ain't my chart. Uh oh Y'all got to stop me from saying this stuff. I didn't need to say that. We lied. But you know, you're, they read them charts and you're like, that, that ain't for me. That's, they say, you 6'2", you're supposed to be 130 pounds. I look like a crackhead, 130 pounds. That chart ain't for us. They need a new <laughs> black Kojic chart. Some of your ladies, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. They go to that chart and they look at your height and they tell you how much you're supposed to lose. I ain't no overweight. <laughs> so, I'm looking at Dr. Now, and he is well renowned for showing people how to do what seemingly he can't. He can help somebody, although he's not living it. Oh, God, I wish you could come here with me. Sometimes we got to listen to the messenger and not pay too much attention. Got to listen to the message and not pay too much attention to the messenger. Because all the time, the messenger may not have it all together. That does not stop if he's saying the truth. The truth is the truth. So if I ain't living right, all right, yo, I, I, you know, and that's the problem in the church because we look at some preachers and some pastors, some elders, some missionaries, some evangelists, and they, they not living right, so I can't receive them. You can't receive the truth because it's far and few between if you're going to look for the perfect person to give you the truth. As long as you're preaching from this Bible, and, and, and you know, it's, it does you a disservice because God will use you and still send you to hell. But I don't want that. If I'm going to preach it, I want to live what I'm preaching so I can be a benefit to what I'm preaching. If I'm going to teach it, I want to live what I'm teaching so I can be a beneficiary of what I am teaching. I don't want to preach you into heaven and I go down to hell. And to tell you the truth, Robinson, we got to preach God's love in his wrath. Somebody shout hallelujah. And, and Sister Brown, thank you for helping me push me today. And some of the so-called deep folks, they say, I, Pastor, I got to separate myself. I can't be around everybody. But when we see you, you around them folks, they got them funny spirits. How are you so deep and you so comfortable around that? How are you so super spiritual? See, watch these deep folks, y'all. And I'm going to tell you this. Can I talk to the men for a minute? You can be masculine and still a worshiper. Because there's a new movement that is feminizing praise and feminizing worship. Okay. 
And you can be a man and still fall on your face and worship God. And women, you can still preach the gospel and not have to look like a man. You can still preach the gospel and keep your femininity. You can still clap like a man. The Bible speaks of that. Amen? Amen. And, and what, what we do, so all, all the deep, and it, it bothers me because sometimes I feel like I'm wrong. Yeah, sometimes it's because, because uh, you know, I, I did a concert. Uh, never mind. Yeah. But sometimes it makes you feel like you're wrong because some people that you trust, that you know are spirit-led and spirit-filled, why are you so comfortable in that? What, why are you so comfortable being around that messy situation? You got the deep Holy Ghost, but you can follow a known gay bishop. And then, you, well, God loves everybody, but you deep, you read the word, you know that God has love and he has wrath. Okay, let me, let me give you more word. Can I go back to the word? This is, I'm going right to the Bible. Can I give you more word? Listen. Because just about every time in the word of God, when you read about his love, let me teach you something for those of you that are learning the word. Anybody still learning the word of God? Where you at? When you read about God's love, not too far will you find his wrath. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. This ain't on the screen. This ain't on the screen. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. When, when y'all got, y'all got your phones out, I want you to read it. You, 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 I want you to look at it so you don't think I'm making up. Everybody, who got it? Who got Romans 5 and 8? You got it? Now, let me know if I'm reading correctly. But God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Is that there? That's what it say, right, Eric? It says, God commends his what? love towards us and while we were yet sinners Christ died for us same book Romans chapter 1 verse 18 I'm still in Romans verse 1 I'm sorry chapter 1 verse 18 you're there with me for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Do you see what I just showed you? You can't just preach his love and don't preach his wrath. Because if you do that, you don't have a balanced diet. And anything that does not have a balanced diet will eventually die. It's quiet. You're listening? Because we, we, we must have the love of God. And we have friends, we have family members, we got church members that are dealing in some things. We don't cast them down. We let them know that God does love them. Look, and the sinner needs to know that. God ain't mad at you. God still loves you. But! He still has a wrath. Because if it was no wrath of God, there would be no sense of heaven and hell. And we got to stop lying to people, especially at funerals and things. Everybody's not going to heaven. I'm still looking for the scripture that tells me heaven is enlarging itself daily. Because all I keep saying is the righteous will scarcely make it in. But they told me hell is enlarging itself daily. 
Don't listen to these lies. I'm trying to tell you the word of God. And yes, you might have messed up. You might have did some things, all that stuff. Yeah, God loves you, but you got to turn it around. You got to turn it around. You know what I did today? I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you because I, I don't want to be judged. I'm going I'm to tell you I did something today. I repented this morning. I, I, I repented this morning. That's what I did. You know why I did that? Because the Bible told me to. Bible says repent. Anybody repented today? I know I ain't the only one. But when they don't teach you this stuff, well, why I got to repent? I ain't did nothing. Nobody saw me do nothing. I ain't get caught. <laughs> you ain't get caught. That don't mean you ain't did. Because sometimes you got to repent for what's up in your brain piece. For what you thought. Sometimes you got to repent for your thoughts are unpure. Well, he's trying to keep you out of hell. That's why he put it in the book for you to repent when? He didn't say repent when you mess up. Because he know, he know us. Charlotte, he know you. He knows we, we are a mess. And I, I know some of us, we don't like to say that because, Pastor, I, I, don't, I don't consider myself a mess. No, no, no. You, we are filthy rags. Thank God he don't judge you on everything you do that we don't see. What if God exposed what was in your mind three days ago? Ain't you glad the saints can't see your thoughts? Because some of us, somebody be talking to you right now. They'll come to you right now and you, you got an attitude in your brain. I wish you would get out my face because I know what you said about me, but I'm smiling. I mean, some of us, our face can't help it. Our, our brain going to sh show up on our face. Some of you ain't got that phony bone yet. Get, you better get you a funny bone <laughs> so you can fake it. But some of us just can't. We just can't. We're, we're the folks that you just don't, you don't know how to fake it. My, my face going to show how, I'm, how I feel about you. I don't care where I'm, my face going to show it. Anybody need God to work on you with that? <laughs> Somebody say, work on me, Lord. Work on me. Because you know why you need God to work on you with that? Because you're going to walk into some places where you might not be cool with everybody, but your blessing is there and your face can turn everybody off. What's, what's, the, what's the scripture, Fisher? One of y'all help me. Where I, I have men pour into your bosom. What, what, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> I have men pour. He didn't say saved men. He didn't say Holy Ghost, breast down, shaking together, will men pour into your bosom. There is somebody right now that you may not agree with but they're going to pour. Somebody might not be living what you think they should be living. You can't let your face mess up your favor. You go in there, I'll get this over with. Can't stand nobody in here. 
Hello, um, you, you're here for the job? Yeah, I'm here for the job. Okay, um, we, we, we're offering 105000 a year. I, I was told it was 110. You already lost. Because you can't control your face. And if there's any learning ground for controlling your face, it's the church. <laughs> All right. Join the usher board under Sister Brown for two weeks. You'll learn how to control that face. If I had energy, I would hoop and holler, but I just, I just want to talk to you because it's time to make these minor changes. These ain't big changes. Ain't, I ain't said nothing about your clothes. Said nothing about your hair. These are minor changes. Realizing that, yes, God loves me, but there's still a wrath. There's still a wrath of God. And how many parents, where you at? Yeah. Let me show you with, with, with parents, any good parent, or a, a good parental system. See, I'm not always the disciplinarian in the parenting of these rights over here. See, <laughs> every now and then I, when I have to, I have to. But they know with a good parenting system, it has to be balanced off with love and wrath. Because if it's only giving and giving and giving, you're going to raise a spoiled child. And when they get into the world, they're going to get a rude awakening. Because not everybody's going to be giving and giving and giving. So, parenting, if you're a single mother, single father, or two parents in the house, whatever, it has to be balanced. There has to be some disciplinarian action. There has to be some wrath. So the child can be balanced. Everything ain't all right. Everything your child do ain't okay. And sometimes you got to take the, the belt or, you know, you know time out oh pow pow I don't know what no time out is I know what overtime is my, my parents did the opposite my, mother, my, my father beat me till he got tired he ran out of breath <sighs> you finish him off Betty I jump, but it gave me a balanced diet of what life is and you need a balanced diet of the word of God somebody say amen, amen. I just got a little bit more I know we got to get ready to go I can finish the rest in Bible study I don't want to bore your patience but and uh, can I tell you one more thing because a lot of us you know I, I call them um, it's a good word for it looky loos I'm going to call them looky loos a lot of us look at folks and see that they're not living right but they're still blessed and we have questions about it Whew, God listen your blessing ain't always just tied to living right. Because some folks is living Holy Ghost field life, living almost perfect and might not have the fancy car and all of this thing. And then you see drug dealers and, and devil worshipers driving the best and living in the best. And that can confuse you if you're not getting a balanced diet of the word. But you know what the word of God says? 
He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Just because somebody got don't mean they living right. Just because you don't got don't mean you ain't living right. It's, a, it's, just a, it's just a balanced diet. I love G Light Sweets. And, and, I, and, I, and I, as you know, I, I taste test just about everything. Just about, not all of it. But I can't just eat that. Then I'll be on my 600 pound life. You can't just eat that. Every now and then, you got to add some green in your diet. You got to add some protein in your diet. But it seems like what tastes the best is what's not. But she, she makes it real good that, that it's good for you too. There's holiness in there. And a lot of people only want sermons that preach and teach. You're going to get a new house. You're going to get a new car. You're going to get a new job. You like sweets. That's nice. That's candy. But somebody got to tell you, if you don't live right, you're good. E. You're good. Somebody got to tell you, if you don't live right, you're going to hell. If you don't repent of your sins, you're going to hell. Well, God don't want to send nobody to hell. No, he don't. That's why he gave you a balanced diet. But he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, he did. But he also said, if you don't receive that son, you're going to get his wrath. Same book. And I, I, I hear it. Oh, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. I, I, I get it. I understand that. But we spitting out what we really need. Lord help me. And I, I know what the word of God said. It, it said in Romans, I, I read it to y'all. God commends his love towards us and that we were yet sin, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That don't mean stay in there. And I, I'm, I want to encourage you because if I, I'm the pastor. I, 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 I've been pastoring 13 years. Pastor anniversary coming up soon. I've been pastoring 13 years and I still got to repent every day. I still got to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to work on me. And if you hear more people saying this, because I know some of y'all think your pastor is a mess. No, nah, them folks you hang around with just as messed up. If not much more. And, and we got to stop being looky loose and open the word of God for ourselves. We need a balanced diet. God's love and God's wrath. Come on, clap your hands and give God a praise. Because help me, Rob. Come, thank God for my friend, brother Rob Armstrong. He's helping us out. Because, because of God's love, you ever, Lord, help me say this right. You ever had somebody love you and you really know you didn't deserve it? You ever? See, some of us in, our, in the natural, we the lovers and people can't, we, we've been expecting us from other people for so long, we get disappointed because they don't love like we love. There's only one person that I know for sure, I don't care how good you think you are, that can outlove you. God will outlove you every time. How many times have we turned on him? And he still love us. How many times have we looked God right in the face and said, I'll never do it again. How many times 
And we looked God right in the face and said, if you get me out one more time, I promise I'll never go back to that. And you were on your way back. You can't outlove God. And you know what else? You can't outwrath God. God's wrath, ask them at Sodom and Gomorrah. That was God's wrath. God loved Moses. Moses was maybe one, one of the most closest people to God. But as much as he loved Moses, when Moses disobeyed him, guess what? I love you, Moses. But you can't even go in the promised land. God's wrath. God loved David. David loved him so much that he danced out his clothes. You can't preach David against Goliath until you can preach David with Bathsheba. He loved David. David was a praiser. But David had to deal with God's wrath too. Because when that baby died, David was on his face crying out to the Lord. Just cause God's wrath may include death sometimes, that don't mean he don't love you. Look at somebody and say, God ain't mad at you no more. Anybody glad he ain't mad at you? And when you, this is where Lord, I'm late. But this is where Peter, Elder Peter, this is where that worship takes another turn. Because when you really look in the mirror and say, he loves me, after all this stuff I've done, he still loves me. When, when you, when you uh, just... Do inventory of your own life and how messed up we are. He woke you up this morning. He still gave you favor. He still loves you. That's why you at the job crying. Ain't nothing wrong. You ain't, ain't nothing wrong. You just I, I, I realize how much God loves me. Folks trying to rub your back. Oh, what happened? No, ain't nothing really happened. He loves me. It takes your arrogance away. It takes your cockiness away. You can't be arrogant with love you didn't earn. Ooh. For about a moment, can we just tell God how much we love him? Come on, y'all. Let's, let's tell God how much we adore him. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Come on, y'all help me say that. I love, come on. I worship you. Yeah. Just want to tell you, oh, that I love you. More. Anybody really love him? I dare you just get on your feet and wave your hand. Come on. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you that I love you. If you love her, help me 
Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wanna say, oh, that I love. You did the last time. Hug yourself and say, I love you, Jesus. And I worship. Just want to tell you that I love you. That I love you, that I love you. Listen, everyone is standing. If you need prayer, you want to turn some things around in your life. And I love you. Come down to the altar. I just want to touch you. That I love you. Come on, come on, come on. That I love you. More than anything. That I love you. Come on, this is a day of turnaround. This is a day of turnaround. That I love you. It's a day of turnaround. Hallelujah. It's a day of turnaround. Yes, God. This is a day of turnaround. And I love you more than anything. Oh, and I love you. This is a day of turnaround. Oh, come here. I want to pray for you. I'm not going to, yeah, come on, come on. This is a day of turnaround. Come on, come on. God's turning some stuff around. I just want you to turn around one time on the altar. And I love you. God is going to turn it around. Whatever you need him to do. He loves you. Yes, God. That's all. But I love you. Come on, that I love you. So turn around. More than anything. It's a day of turnaround. He loves you. He only chase who he loves. He only chase who he loves. The people he loves go through the most. He loves you. Woo. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That I love you. He loves you deep. More than any, more than anything. Oh, I love you. More than anything. 
Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Minister Fisher, when I laid my hand on you, God is telling me, oh Lord, that this, you've had, you had one of the most amazing turnarounds and stories of restoration. I don't know if you ever thought about writing a book or putting what you've been through in a book. The story needs to be told. Your restoration story. You know, your restoration story is going to shift young men's lives. The recovery that you made and that God is your recovery gonna make you forget everything you went through. I speak right now to your heart. Yes, God. Uh. Restoration is not complete until you at 100% peace. No worry. When you're no worrying, then your restoration is complete. God is completing your restoration. He's restoring everything that you've lost. And then some. You will have quadruple what you lost or what you should have had. Quadruple is coming in the name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands for Minister Fisher. favor find somebody and point at them just point at them and do this say this I'm so glad you didn't give up you almost did come on now <laughs> almost so I'm so glad you didn't give up all right we want to receive our offering. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That I love. More than anything. More than anything. More than anything, yeah, oh, Lord. So glad you didn't give up. Listen, we know it's first Sunday. I'm sowing a seed of $100. There's some more of us that can sow that seed of $100. If that's you, I want you to stand right where you are. That I love you. Come on, I want you to stand with that $100 seed if you're watching us online. God is doing something amazing in the house of God. Elder Peter, I'm so glad you didn't give up.
God bless you, Mama Ali. Mother Ali. Can I can I tell y'all something? I'm so glad that <laughs> Yo, yo, I'm not a pastor that they had to fly in from somewhere and I won some election or something. I actually grew up here at Grace and I know the stories of some of the people. I remember at waiting in the car when my mother and my father went to see Elder Peter and his family, they told him to plan the funeral. Am I telling the truth? They told him to plan the funeral. That had to be at least 20 years ago. His head, his head was open. Twenty years ago, they planning, they write that, that, there's that pen and paper again, writing the funeral plans. And look at him now. He here, and he blessed. You can't die before your purpose. I, I, I grew up, like I said, I'm, I'm glad I'm not somebody from somewhere. Y'all, I, I know the people here. When Sister Moody and I, we used to live around the corner from Sister Moody, 162 Clothing Avenue in the projects, and I used to see Larry Moody, Deacon Larry Moody, we know him as, and, and, and he, would, he would never come to church. He was always out there on Sunday mornings watching his car and making sure nobody hit his car with his bike, with our bikes. She kept living the life in front of him. He ended up coming to the church, getting saved, beating her to church. He couldn't leave here until he got it right. Come on. I, I love the fact that I can see the stories. Anybody else, you praying for somebody to get saved in your life? You want them to come to Christ? I'm telling you, keep living it in front of them. They coming. Listen, you didn't have $100, $50, whatever you have, come, come, everybody. You might have a $50 seat. Come on, come on. I love you, Lord. That I love. <laughs> I was in the hospital. This is before Eric and Yo-Yo even got married. Yo-Yo didn't like church people then. <laughs> I was in <laughs> I was in the hospital like who this guy <laughs> Eric had how many seizures you had that day he had 20 seizures in one day twenty you supposed to something supposed to be wrong up there I know he a little he a little weird but it's supposed to be a lot worse People have one, two seizures and never fully recover. 20 in 24 hours. Sister Ali, ain't that something? And look at them. Mama P, look at them. I'm glad I know the stories. He's still in his right mind. Got out of there and married that woman. <laughs> Come on, hold that seed up in your right hand. The right hand. Come on, Sister Kenny. Come on. 
God gonna work on your granddaughter, Sister Kenny, the one that used to come here. He gonna work on her. Wherever she is, she gonna get worked on right now. God gonna work on her. Lord, we thank you for the seeds that we're sowing. We know we're sowing it in the good ground and we expect a great harvest, God. God, continue to bless us and give us favor, unimaginable favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout, here I go. Trust in God again. When you bring your seeds, say, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Come on, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine. Oh, one more time that I love more than any. Clap your hand and give God a praise very quickly. The hour is far spent. We're getting ready to go into our communion. And listen, communion is a very important part of our worship. It's a very important part of our Christian journey. Amen. And um, we must always honor communion. We must always, the Bible says, do this as often as you can. Amen. And then it comes back and says, you're doing this in remembrance of me. Amen. Give me C-sharp, put that in C-sharp. Let us break bread together on our knees. And we, we have to honor communion. Amen. More teaching. Can I help you just a little bit? Just 15 seconds. You don't have to be perfect to take communion. Your heart got to be in the right place. Amen. Your heart got to be in the right place. That's why we're getting ready to pray. Everyone is standing for prayer. Let us pray. Pray. Father God, I pray right now over this communion fellowship right now, Lord. I pray that if we had a crossword with our brother or with our sister, that you forgive us. Forgive us of sins of omission and sins of commission. Lord, we've probably done something that we're not even aware of. I pray right now that you forgive us. Take out anything in our heart that's not like you. Jealousy, envy, backbiting. Whatever it is, take it out, God, because we want to take communion with the right spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. If you're taking communion, you can stay right where you are. We're not going to move you. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to have Deaconess Rosalie Brown to pray for the bread and I'm going to have Elder Peter to pray for the cup in that order bless your name on today Lord God we ask that you take this bread Lord God hallelujah that represents your body turn it from the natural to the spiritual Lord in Jesus name amen God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would take this blood, God, that was shed on Calvary's cross for our sin, and renew it and restore it in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Break bread together on our knees. If you're receiving communion, remain standing. We'll come to you. With my face to the rising sun. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together. 
on our knees when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh Lord have mercy Let us break bread together on our knees. Give me A flat. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood. Oh, I know it was the blood. Oh, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Yeah, oh, one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. No, it was the blood for me. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go. We're making a beeline to Baldwin, Long Island. Those of you that need a ride, hit, get with somebody else that's getting there. The choir is going to be singing. We're going to be with Dr. Harden. Harden is a good friend of this church. Amen. Every time we call him, he comes. And we ain't never been to him. I don't think. The first time. So we're going to go on out there. Everybody that can go is going to go. You coming with me, Brother David? Come on with us. Come on with us. We're going to put you in the car with somebody. Amen. Charles Minor is in the house, y'all. That's my God brother for real. I, I got some stories I can tell, but I ain't going to tell them. All right, come on, let's stand. Don't I got stories, Mother Sheila? <laughs> Listen, if you want some of these G-Lite sweets, I don't know if she's sold out yet or what, but she got some stuff up here. And only eat what you're supposed to eat. I'm going to start putting a cap on some of y'all. Some of y'all don't need no five and six cakes. She said, I'm your pusher man. Look at her. <laughs> Y'all know God is blessing your first lady. Mm. Hallelujah. We're going. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father God, we love you. We thank God. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your anointing saturating this room. We pray right now for traveling grace and mercy. Give us where we're going to our separate destinations without any hurt, harm, or danger coming to us. And we promise to continue to give your name the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor, hug somebody and tell them I love the Lord. And you too.